Howdy, Evil Bart here, and welcome. I figured I'd go ahead and just stream while I was working on a side project. And if anybody wants to watch, ask any questions, jump right on in, let me know. But just figured to try something a little bit different. So, what I am working on is a little bit different than the normal project, but we'll be adding some of this content into the normal project. And, yeah, let's take a look at what it looks like so far. And this is only about 30 minutes worth of work so far. Um, just trying to set up the the main menu and probably change the camera angle to be looking down a bit more. It's kind of looking more towards the midsection, but if anybody recognizes the screen from a game from a few years ago, many years ago, let me know in the comments. I'm not going to mention what I'm doing, but how do you crusher? So if anybody recognizes the game, let me know. So extra credit for for picking out what this kind of resembles. Um, this is all going to be blueprint only, and, you know, it's just nice and simple and easy. Using the, the same basic um, setup that I've had before. I'll change this around a little bit more, but I've um, already added in one render target here, and I was in the process of making the next render target, and if anybody didn't know how to add the animated character, then, yeah, I'll figure what the heck, I'll go ahead and show it. So, for right now, there's just really nothing in it. Um, the render target that I'm working on is for the car, and I'm going to put a car into the scene. So, all I've done is I've created a blank um, blueprint, and I've added a skeletal mesh, and then I'm going to go ahead and add in a camera. And with the camera, I'm going to go ahead and drag it out and rotate it around. Kind of want to have an up and down angle on the car. So I'm going to get the camera eh, sort of situated for now. I'm not going to really worry about fine tuning the camera until I actually get the next component in. With the camera selected, I want to add another component. And that's going to be a scene capture component 2D. And with that selected, scroll all the way down to you find scene capture. And then the texture target, I want to go ahead and create a render target. And I'm going to go ahead and put that in my character's render targets folder that I've already created. And the name I'm going to go ahead and give it is T for texture underscore car underscore RT, so I know that it's the texture for the car's render target. And I'm going to save that. And I'm going to go ahead and drag this over here. And now I can open that render target. So you see, it's not even close. But let's go ahead and make it larger. And I'm thinking that I want to go a thousand by eight hundred. Let's actually try 600. So there's nothing showing right now, but if you go back in here and hit compile and save, and then go back in, we can see that it's showing something. So let's go ahead and move the camera, and it's going to drag the scene component with it. So I want to bring it out, bring it back, and I want to kind of come up a bit more. Compile and save, and we'll look at our render target again. It's not bad. I want to be turned more, so let's actually change that and down, and let's go up. I have kind of a certain view that I'm looking for. It's not bad. I need to move it over some. And you're going to have to play around whenever you're doing these things to get the view just the way you want it. Not bad. I need to go down and zoom in a little bit. It 
Um, this, like I was saying, is, um, I don't know if anybody recognized or is old enough to recognize the um, the main menu styling. You want to trim over to the left, and it was um, a game from a few years back called um, Motor City Online. And the more that I got to thinking about all you poor unlucky people who were losing the game Paragon and kept saying the same thing about well, you know that's going to be good enough. I'm just going to zoom in a little bit more. Um, I know what it's like to lose a game that I loved and Motor City Online for me was that game. I absolutely loved that game. And the game itself um, I linked it in my Discord channel. It was, um... Let me actually grab the link here from that. If anybody wants to open up another tab. But it was, um... Motor City Online was a car racing game. It was based off of the Need for Speed... Early Need for Speed uh, engine. It was between 3 and 4 on the Need for Speed series, so actually people called it Need for Speed 5 at some point, but let me move to the right. So that's close enough. Um, I can refine this later. So I've got my blueprint open. I don't need it anymore. Um, I've got my render target open. I don't need it anymore for right now. Uh, the next part of it is we need to go ahead and save all. And here's where it gets kind of screwy. Is um, I'm going to take the texture, I'm going to right click on it and create a material. And I'm going to call the material M underscore car underscore RT. And okay, it works. The render target and the material works. But what happens is whenever I go in here, this image is where I'm going to actually place the... and I'm going to go ahead and anchor that to center. Um, what's going to happen is whenever I go in here to my brush and I select the material ahead of time, so M car RT, and then hit the arrow, it's going to give me an error saying that um, the material does not use UI material uh, domain, so change to material domain, so I say yes no problem. And then I compile and save, but what's happened is it's broken my material. So now I have to go back into my material again and reconnect the line that was already connected once before. And I really don't like the view. I need to change it so it's more of a down angle, but this will at least get it on the screen for now. So I've fixed the material. Go back in here and you can see that we have the car in there. Now <clears throat> we need to actually put this car in the main menu map which is this and all I've done is I've thrown in some buildings it's not even a complete map and this is the player it's just shoved to right there I can technically bring that blueprint in right here and rotate it around so it's in the scene and I just want to make sure that I'm getting enough of it to where I am in it. If I need to, I can make the scene bigger. But the problem is, it's probably going to show up in the character a little bit. But again, not going to matter all that much. So I want to go ahead and compile everything, make sure everything's saved. And now we can see that we have the background there in the image. So let's save that and let's try playing it in a standalone viewer and see if it, it shows up correctly. Um, yeah, back about the game. The game was based around muscle cars, American muscle. Um, yeah, that's going to be good enough for now. Um, anywhere from a 32 Ford Coupe all the way up to um, the 71. Firebirds and stuff like that. Um, actually, if 
you're looking at this screen right here, the um, the image that I'm looking at is this was an original screen from the game. So you kind of compare that screen to what I'm actually doing here. It's close enough to where anybody who knows will know, but it's just different enough to be, well, just a little bit different. So let's go ahead and exit. And we know that now the menus are working. Then we don't see each other, you know, each of the two render targets inside there. We see a little bit of the tail of the Camaro. So we'd have to. It's actually, yeah, we're going to have to work on the map a little bit more. So we, we needed to bring the car over. And we're just going to go ahead and grab three of these tiles Control C, Control V. And I'm going to go ahead and just slide them over and move them down just a little. So that we can, yeah, so we, we got it in there now. And what I'll do is I'll come in here and I put these two garage pieces in. I'm just going to clone those and put those in the map and there we go that covers enough of it and I'll go ahead and do a quick build yeah th and there was drag racing street racing circuit track racing there was some NASCAR style stra tracks to it but uh, you were running on like dirt roads or through city streets or an industrial complex and there were occasionally there were jumps and there were tight turns and it was all about configuring your car and having your car set up correctly um, just like you would with any like a MOBA or RPG or whatever else you really had to build your car really really well in order to be competitive on the tracks and um, you could change the springs, the sway bars, the tires, the pistons, the camshaft, the crankshaft, um, the engine blocks. I mean, you could change out everything to build your car from a rusty hunk from a, a cheap used car lot or from the auctions. There were player-hosted auctions. There were actually um, auctions that were hosted by the server. Um, you could get rare parts that would pop up in the auctions and you know it was all about getting that car perfect and um, when you had everything dialed in perfectly your car just handled really good and <coughs> it was amazing fun game a lot more fun than it sounds so that's good enough for now what I eventually want to do is change this background screen so that it has kind of a curved effect so it, it covers part of that and then I'll change the background of this portion right here so it'll be this green and, and ivory will end off like right here with a curve and then I'll try to put another curve section right over here somehow so that it, it just cuts the edge of this image so it's not so cut and dry um, but I'll refine that later I just want to get it to where I had a functional looking menu and so far the only thing that's going to work is single player, multiplayer where you can host or find games and I'll position everything a little bit better but it's a good start getting me there and using the demonstration map um, I'm going to make sure everything's saved here I'm going to close my main menu go to and I resaved this map this is um, the map from the Polygon City and for now I'm just going to use this as a temporary lobby one thing I want to do is I want to find my traffic cones and the one thing that I, I do want from them is I want to come down here and I want to details I want to go to simulate physics so we can actually knock them over nobody wants to run into a traffic cone that'll stop a 5,000 pound car 
Um, I've removed the extra cars from the map already. Um, I need to come back through and just sort out all these things and put them in different folders. So I can't stand cluttered map um, outliner. So map stuff, you know, your fog and light and post-processing and all that stuff will go into there and then I'll, I'll set up another one later where it has all the apartments, all the streets, all the whatever will have their own little thing. And for now I want to go ahead and put in a couple player starts. And let's go with a player start here. Right now it's still set up as the um, the first person or a third person character. So there is no real game mode set to it. Um, I haven't added the cars in on this one just yet. And play this one selected viewport and what will happen is you're actually the UE4 mannequin. But can fix that as well. Um, I want to go ahead and where to create an animation blueprint for the the characters. So if I wanted to I could go ahead and go to my player blueprint and change it over. Go to my mesh. Let's take a look at it and I want to change it over to the same guy that's in the menu which is the male dude with a jacket and the polygon animation blueprint. Compile and save. Now I'm going to go into play. We could be a more suitable character that'll fit with the, uh, the city. But we need to go ahead and add the cars in. Yay, at least we got something to work with. Um, I'm going to end up adding in the, the vehicle from the stream earlier. It seems to work really good. But for now... Um, um, yeah, I guess I could add it in there. The, it was a, a vehicle system that was donated by somebody else. What I'll do is I'll actually grab the um, the whole folder from another project that I was working on on the on the stream, and I will just copy it in. That way, all the changes will already be there, so I won't have to change anything else. I can just drop it in and be able to drive the car. It's got the game mode. It's got everything else I need already in it. So, let's do that. So, we'll copy that into the content. Sorry, you can't see what I'm doing off screen there. But, this was the, um, the stuff here. Vehicles. It was a hover, hover bike. And we actually swapped it out to where we are using the car. And, with this, the vehicle... Um, I can actually change the the texture to be white with red, the blue. Um, there's a few different colors. We'll match it up to the one that was in the menu. So we're at least driving that. And compile, save, and let's go ahead and close that for now. This should already be set up. So if I change the game mode over to that new one, and hit play. We now have a car we can drive. So, this being the lobby, what I'll probably end up doing is setting up using the third person game mode and also having the cars. And that'll allow you to actually drive around town, try to make it so you can't run over pedestrians and run over players and then you go somewhere like, okay I want to come over here turn right I want to head back over to the parking lot next to the park and it's right over here and right there I have spent a lot of time driving around the city so this car system is going to need some tweaking because you can see I'm almost at a dead stop and I'm still able to spin the car around so I'm going to have to change a few variables here and there but you'd be able to come over here and park your car and then get out and walk around. So yeah, I'm going to have to fix the, uh, the vehicle's handling and driving a bit more. 
So you come to a complete stop, you'd be able to hit like the F key and get out of your car, and the car would actually stay there, and you could just walk around, or the car itself would despawn, and you could still walk around. That way, you can actually interact with things like the ATM. Um, come over here, and then if you walk over to go to this pizza parlor, you walk over to the door, and I'll actually change over to third-person game mode. Walk back in. So I parked right over here, and as soon as I get out of my car, I can now walk over here, and if I want to enter this. I could hit the E key or or whatever, and it would then transport me to the interior of that particular map. Um, so that that's the plans for, for that portion of it down the road. For right now, we just wanted to go ahead and get the car set up, um, get the initial map set up, get the main menu set up, and um, we'll start adding in some some ambience. I don't have any audio set up just yet. Um, I'm not going to use the starter content in this this project to keep the file size low. As it stands right now, if I were to package this up the way it is, it's about a 105 megabyte upload. In fact, I've actually uploaded one earlier to the um, the Discord channel, and I'll scroll up and see if I can get a copy of that and post it in here, so you guys can actually take a look at it if you want. Um, actually get it the right way here instead of just copying the link that way um, so if you guys want to check this out of the version that we did in the live stream earlier um, it's essentially just what you see at this point right now and it is pretty much the same it's the same as where we are now with the car in this map so this is what you you have there is no um, respawn system and I did not set up anything so if you actually drive off the edge here um, that's it you lose your car you're you're done with the game you have to restart so I guess the next thing to do is actually come in here and start putting in some some bounds instead of putting in fences and things like that let's I'm just gonna go ahead for now go to volumes and add in a uh, blocking volume the second one on the list I should know where that is and I'm just gonna bring this over here and I'm gonna have to put a bunch of them in just to kinda make it to where it works and I wanna change the size naturally let's make it a little taller nobody should be able to get over that and then we can actually go ahead and scale it up and we're gonna have to put a bunch of them in so we go all the way around you can't just put one big blanket one in and hopefully that'll work but just gonna scale that up and yeah, like so and just move it over a little bit adding these blocking volumes in is going to prevent people from being able to get it out of the map and that way I don't have to worry about a respawn system these cars are as best as I can tell we have not been able to flip one over yet in fact actually I'm just gonna grab this blocking volume and I'm gonna go ahead and create a folder called blocking volumes and move that one in there and I'm just going to go ahead and copy and paste and just start dragging them around if you guys are into like car racing games or cars in general let's turn the camera up yeah five's good but um like Need for Speed Underground, there was a, some pretty good, I mean, I say pretty good um, racing games that have been out over the years, but there's not been a true racing MMO uh, in quite some time, and Motor City Online was that. It was MMOG, but it was also a um, 
car racing, and it was classic cars. And the one thing that spurred me, and this is kind of a, a story I've told a few times, but I'm old, and I do that. I tell the same stories over and over again. It's my prerogative. I'm old. I can do that. Um, I would say I, I couldn't even begin to tell you what year it was, um, but it was while Motor City Online was actually active and, and a viable game. I've been playing it for about a year or so. In fact, at the time, um, I was injured at work. And, I mean, I couldn't even walk. So I was on crutches. I couldn't really get around all that good. And it was problematic. But then, again, I had workman's comp, and I got a paycheck coming in every damn week. And all I had to do with my time while I was healing and learning how to walk again um, was to sit around and play video games. I ordered Domino's Pizza every freaking day of the week. Without fail, you know, not a problem. And, um, yeah, I, I got to where I could drive and do okay. Um, I had three cars at the time. I had a full size Ford Bronco, I had a, a Honda Prelude that I actually drag raced, and I had a Honda CRX that I also drag race from time to time and um you know I'm an old redneck and I'm out there drag racing imports really but yeah um I needed to go to the store and get cigarettes freaking out because I need cigarettes so I get myself together and walk out the door or hobble out the freaking door and go out and the Bronco's dead. Battery's dead. So, well, shit. So, I hop in the CRX. The reason why I wasn't driving the CRX is because, well, when you got a bashed up foot and you can't really walk all that good and you can't really use but one foot at a time, um, driving a manual transmission is probably not the best way to go. So, the Bronco was automatic. Uh, so, whatever. Um, but yeah, hop in the CRX, battery's dead. I'm like, well, shit. So I go over to the drag car, the the Prelude. I'm like, well, screw it. I'll just grab the damn battery out of the drag car. And um, go over to the CR, the the Prelude, and guess what? Battery's freaking dead. So no way to, to leave the house. I, I'm stuck. So nobody's home for my family. Nobody I can call locally that was home to to come in and give me a hand or give me a ride or give me a jump start or anything. So I'm stuck. I mean, I just I can't do anything. So out of desperation, I had the game running. So I get into the chat rooms and you know the little town that I was living in at the time. I was I was hitting every one of the freaking chat rooms. Hey, is anybody live in this town? Anybody live in this town? Anybody live in this town or nearby? Um, I need help. And I got, there was, I think, 16 different chat rooms you can go into. So I get to um, one of the chat rooms, and I ask the same question. Does anybody live in this town that could come give me a hand? And someone responded back, like, yeah, I live, you know, and the place he told me that he lived in was like, not five miles from me. I'm like, dude, you've got to help me. He's like, okay, no problem. So he hops in his vehicle. He drives across town, comes over, and pulls up in the yard. And he's got almost the exact same make and model uh, Ford Bronco that I've got. So we headed off, became good friends, and introduced me to somebody named Buck, who was his neighbor. And... He was one of these old school Marines. And, you know, he's retired, got cancer, stuck at home, can't really do anything. But he was an old school drag racer also. And he loved drag race, but he just couldn't do it anymore. He's the one that helped me build um, 
build up that, uh, believe it or not, got this old school drag racer that builds big V8s and big blocks and small blocks and crap like that, and he also built a, a Honda drag car. But, yeah, um, he passed away. And the day that he passed away, or, the, or you know, the weekend after he passed away, um, about 100 people, 150 or so people from the game all got together, and you could change your, your license plate in the game on your car. And at least 300 people that I know of that were on that one particular server that knew him or knew of him changed their license plate to say Buck. And we had a series or a a sponsored race that was actually sponsored by EA and everything else for the Buckster Memorial Race. It was pretty cool. It was a good community. And you don't find that much anymore. So that's my story about Motor City Online of, you know, the people and that kind of stuff. It was everyday part of my life and to the point where I was one of those people who in the game you could only have four people per race and whenever you go through and race first, second, third, and fourth are the ones that actually get the uh, the prizes or first through third fourth place gets nothing okay fair enough um, alright you're going to be a pain in the ass. So move to blocking volumes. Um, I actually would... I had four computers set up. Had really good internet connection at the time. And I ended up with four accounts. And what I would do was... Um, I would get into the race with all four accounts. Since you could only be four racers at a time in it. I would drive around the track get first, switch computers, drive around the track, get second, switch computers, get third, and then fourth place, I'd just go ahead and exit the game, or exit the other uh, race, because he wasn't going to get any damn money anyway. I would, in, in turn, take that money that I won and transfer it all to one account. Well, with that, I would then take 100000 of the in-game currency and I'd put that crap on eBay and sell it for 20 bucks. And I could make between first, second, and third place in a race, I could make 100 grand in one race. So, not too shabby. In about an hour's time, I could make 200,000 bucks, so that equates to about 40 bucks an hour. And since I had no life, um, my, that game was my life. Um, I'd stay up till 3, 4 o'clock in the morning watching the auctions because there would be some rare auction cars that would pop up at 3, 4 o'clock in the morning. So I'd wait until that time in the morning and I would have my ass in the auction house and I would actually go ahead and bid on and, and win all of those really cool auctions. Ended up being one of the, in the top three or either top five richest people in the game the most in-game currency and the rarest cars in the game because they're like one particular car there would only be three of them in the entire server and at one point these were the um, the AMC AMX Javelin with a rusty paint job which made it even more rare even because it had a rusty paint job and if you painted it you killed the value of it because it was no longer rare it had no miles on it, so it was called a zero-mile car. So it's brand new, but it was rusty, and it had a chop top. So it was the rarest car in the game, and there was only three of them, and I had all three of them at one point. Rusty paint jobs were some of the rarest vehicles you can get, because they didn't happen very often. And then if you had somebody that was stupid, that didn't know about the value of the cars, they would actually repaint them and destroy the value of the car. So I, I dealt with a lot of the rusty cars. 
especially if they had chop tops or if they were convertibles or there was something else special features of them like a 1940 Ford coupe with convertible top and the the decal sponsored paint job and the you know that kind of stuff the more rare features and shit you had on it the, the the more it was actually worth we are almost done with our blocking volumes here I know this is about as much fun as watching paint dry but it's just one of those things that you're gonna have to do whenever you're you're setting up a map to keep players from falling out and trust me I have several people that I know that are friends and team members that if you give them one little micron of a map where they could potentially fall out and ruin the gameplay by falling out of the map they're gonna find it and they're gonna fall out of the map maybe not intentional but they're gonna find it and you know, oh I just fell out of the map I'm like, why how the hell did you find a one little mini tiny frickin space where you could fall out of the damn map nobody else could fall out of the map but them so I have to go through and do this on every frickin map or else they're gonna fall through um, doing testing earlier John came right over here to the edge of this and I was able to tab and yeah this is the polygon city pack um, absolutely love this one they just did an update where they actually the road pieces now have collisions so you don't actually have to go in there like I, I showed in a video a while back um, where when you first go into it the first thing you have to do is actually add collisions to the frickin road pieces because you get all happy you load up this demonstration map and the first thing you do is you walk off the curb and you fall through the damn world it was a pain in the ass it was a minor inconvenience but it was a pain in the ass so they fixed that and they changed some stuff on the cars as well um, so there are some some little updates that they made to it um, I think the update was this morning I think got all of them except for the Western pack and the war pack and I'm looking forward to getting those but I just can't afford them right now I mean, hell, it sucks having no freaking income whatsoever I mean I'm not starving I'm still a fat kid so I mean, I'm not like I I need the basics I have enough to where I can take care of that but I can't justify buying asset packs and and UE4 stuff oh yeah there I already got the, the Camaro set up right now um, I'm not sure in just a second I, and that's why I was putting these uh, these bounds in because I don't really want to go through and create a respawn system just because somebody drove off the edge of the other uh, city and what I want to do with this map is actually use it like a lobby system where you can actually drive around the city and then get out of the car so I've got one more um, blocking volume to place and then I'll I'll drive around and test the theory I sure wish somebody would buy me the freaking war pack that shit looks awesome you see I've already got um, some projects set up that um, that has um, flying mechanics already set up so that um, I need to get them replicated but flying is already set up to work uh, of course driving I can make that work pretty easy um, so I want to set up the tanks I want to set up the airplanes and I want to set up the ships I actually got uh, another uh, project set up on the side that is actually um, the a working ship with working cannons so, so now with that that should prevent that from happening why the hell was I able to just drive right through that freaking thing that is a blocking volume that I just put down here did I put an audio volume in I sure as hell did. That's a damn audio volume. You guys let me do that. I blame you. <laughs> I find the one spot, the one spot in the entire freaking map where it is possible to go through, and I found it <laughs> on the first try. The first place I try to drive out the damn map, 
and I go right out because my dumbass put an audio volume in instead of a blocking volume. All right, let's try that again. So yeah, I set up the card to match the the same as the the main menu. So we just want to make sure that we can bounce off the walls and not go into the water. All right, so that works. Still got to adjust the, um, the 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 bounding box or the the mechanical box for this car because it's not a hundred percent working perfectly yet. It's better than the one from the UE4 template. It's got a better feel, so when you're you're cornering, it feels a little bit better, if that makes any sense, since I'm playing with keyboard. Um, but there's little things that I have to look at, like like that. I'm at almost complete stop, and I'm still able to just spin around in a circle. But I want to make it to where... Okay, driving on the wrong side of the street here, and yes you hit the traffic cones and you can actually knock them over let's go back to the traffic cone see I knocked one over right there it kinda of bugged me that whenever you're driving around a damn city you run into a traffic cone and it stops you dead cold like it was made out of concrete I've gotten to know this city pretty well so I'm, I know where I'm going All right, so that works. The blocking volumes are good to go. I work on the um, the car mechanics a little bit more. Uh, John Galt from MoCap Online actually made the mechanics for the car. And he said it, this was the mechanics for his hover bike, and I got to preview test his um, something he's actually gonna be putting on the marketplace. It's a hover bike and shooting mechanics all replicated multiplayer it's good to go I mean it, it's some cool stuff and with the hover bike you can actually um, a pastor can jump on the back of the hover bike and shoot or throw grenades from from the back of the bike so it's pretty slick so let's actually go back let's do a save all make sure everything's good to go and let's go back to you can see right there Polygon City um, I'm going to close that down, close that down, close that down, close out the player. I'm going to close out some things and I'm going to go to the main menu map. And we'll try playing it in standalone again so we can see it from the menu standpoint. Like I said, I've been, this is, we're, I've been streaming for 45 minutes, so just a hero over an hour and this is what I've got done so far. This is creating the um, the image for the the background, adding in the two render targets for the cars. Even though the render target for the car doesn't do anything, can actually go ahead and add something to that scene. But let's go ahead and go to multiplayer host game, um, make a classy name for our, our server, hit make, and there we go. We can actually drive around and that's all we can do so far. And we have sound on the car as well. And we have collision boxes to keep us from driving out of the map. So we can hit escape, go back to the main menu, and good to go. So let's actually add in a little chica. I had a female standing right here just doing the idle animation for now just to add something else. So the, that render target doesn't actually look like it's just a, a static picture. Um, so I can actually go to the car and go to the viewport. And later on I will change the, the angle of the camera and stuff. But let's go ahead and add in another component. A skeletal mesh. Chicky. Went in... Skeletal mesh of I don't, know, don't have any sexy um, Polygon City uh, females. So I mean, if I wanted to, I can go ahead and bring in the uh, the Polygon Pirates and get the winch or something like that. But yeah, whatever. We'll just start with this for now. 
um, female jacket. That's good enough. Let's bring her out a little bit, bring her up a little bit. And Chica, you need to animate. You need to do something. And let's turn her around. And I'm actually going to... Yeah, I can see her. Um, looking at the thumbnail for the... Um, and of course you can't see it here. Um, looking at the thumbnail here for that. And I can see her in, in frame. But I want to go ahead and move her up just a hair. And we'll compile and save. So now... Save selected, go into it, we should see her in it. Yes, I'm drinking coffee at 20 after 3 in the morning. Mm -mm. Cut off her head, we gotta fix that. So let's actually... Yep. There she is there. And our arm is sticking through the, the car itself. Go to viewport. And we need to bring her... There. Worst case scenario, then I'll shrink her butt down. And the reason why I'm playing in the um, the standalone game mode for doing this is because in the menu, if you just do it in the standard viewport, the image is kind of skewed and it doesn't show things in the correct position. Yep, that's that's bad too. Um, let's actually move her to the other side of the car, and that should take care of that problem. And I can actually see in the render target that it's actually got her there and we'll see all right so she's there yeah whatever we'll just i'll tweak it one more time and we'll leave it at that well, no, I'll worry about it. Um, we at least see that there's something in there. There's some movement in the, the scene. So that, um, you know, we're good to go. What I could do later on is actually, since these two render targets are both in the same scene, but they're separate render targets, I could add in a uh, nav mesh bounds in this area here and actually have you know, a random pedestrian walking back and forth. So there's a little bit more activity on the screen. So you can actually see that there's something going on. Which would be funny is you'll see somebody walk by here and then you'll see it in the, the car, um, Ritter Target. Then as they walk by behind this dude over here, you'll see him pop up in that one. <coughs> so with that, um, that war pack, um, Are the tanks set up to where you can actually configure them to work? You know, the turrets work separately, the guns work separately to where you can elevate and rotate and that kind of stuff. And that's got the Tiger, the Sherman, the T-34, um, Stug-3, SU-85, um... The M3 half-track, the S... I always screw up the, the nomenclature of the German half track. It's like S Z K or whatever. 251. So I was just kind of curious if the uh, the tank turrets actually are usable and the guns usable on the tank turrets to where they'll elevate and the turrets turn. And kind of wanted to know also if the turrets on the battleship and the cruiser if they elevate and rotate, if the guns elevate and the turret rotates. 
That way I can actually make the turrets and stuff work on the ships and actually add in some ship based. Yeah, for the war pack. Um, because I know there's um, a battleship and a cruiser um, and the submarine, but the battleship um, are the turrets separate where they can be rigged to rotate? And are the guns separate from the turrets so they can elevate? Yeah, that, that'd be something to, to let me know about because that's a big plus for me on, on that pack is if I can actually make the guns work to where I could actually make a sort of a World of Warships kind of deal going on with the, the battleship and the cruiser and just get started with two ships and then maybe add a submarine in with the deck gun on it or whatever. But um, then you got the aircraft. I mean, those are easy enough to make them work. Um, not enough fiddling with the main menu map for right now. So, um, with an actual other map, if we wanted to add in a second map besides the, the lobby, um, I don't need the RT test map anymore because I converted that into the main menu map. Again, I like to get rid of unnecessary files just because they're dead space. Um, let's actually go ahead and close down the render target for the car. And I'm not going to make a full map, but um, just a test track to um, drive the car, hit some jumps, things like that. Some things for the cars to do, or car to do. So go in here, I'm going to dump that, dump that, and go ahead and set the game mode to the vehicle. And I'm going to go ahead and set a base terrain. A um, little bit big for a test area, so let's go with 4x4. Um, four four. Um, another thing to consider also for a vehicle, if you really want to rapidly hammer out terrain, there's a quick way of doing real world terrain. So I need to do another video on that just so you can see. But essentially, I can take um, uh, real world terrain and pick out the location. And now it's primarily for the United States. I haven't tested it anywhere else. But um, let's go ahead and create that. Go back to standard mode. Click on my landscape details, and I'm going to lower it to zero height. Zero zero zero. And it is 12,600 on its dimension. So now I'm just going to go ahead and throw in a, a wall. We'll set it on zero, negative 12,600. Should put it right there on the edge. The tanks, the turret is movable and separate. How about the gun? Is it is the gun separate from the turret? I know I'm asking a lot of questions. Really, 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 really want that asset back. Nice. That'll make um, a lot of fun for setting up the guns, setting up the ships, setting up the uh, the tanks, things like that. Um, I know some people that'll be really happy. Oh, crap. 26,000. Shit, how big I gotta make this damn wall? I know you guys love watching me work on... Um, um, BSP geometries. You know that's close enough. This is just a test track, so I'm not even gonna. I mean, I may not even keep this freaking map. Z height. Let's go ahead and make it a thousand. Set that to five hundred, and it should be lovely. Okay. So Control C, Control V. I'm not even really worried about textures at this point. Um, 
So this is just to um, experiment with the vehicles, play around with them. So with the um, so that should be negative one two six zero zero, and this should be zero. Yeah, with the um, the polygon city stuff, I can quickly go between the the vehicles. Control C, Control V. Actually, undo, and just come in here and remove the negatory, and that's good. So, can I actually drive around on this one? Yeah, I want to make with that war pack. I wanted to do a um, uh, a working full battle scene where the ships could be off the coast firing, but also wanted to have ship versus ship battle, and. I um, want to do uh, dog fighting with the aircraft, um, do tanks, and do a mixed battle scene to where um, you got people on the ships, and you got people on the aircraft, people on tanks, people on foot, because you got uh, different rocket launchers and stuff like that. It's okay, the map works. Um, let's go ahead and do a quick build on it and let it be doing that. Um, but then also um, set up a separate, like, actual. Uh, war scene. We've got the um, the asset pack, the third person template from MoCap Online, and it's actually marked down to eighty bucks right now. So it's a pretty good deal. It used to be hundred bucks, like ninety nine ninety nine, and now it's seventy nine ninety nine. So being that it's marked down, it's worth taking a look at. Um, so it's actually gonna have the um, the stuff that I need right off the bat. Oh, I hate this frickin' mouse cursor bug. It doesn't matter how I change it in the options, it always comes back. So I end up having to go into it. I'm going to go into the character itself, to the blueprints, and what the hell was that all about? Stop. And we want events begin play. This was the blueprint here. I don't want to show anything of a blueprint in detail because of the fact that um, this was created by somebody else. I'm allowed to use it, however, I'm not allowed to share this particular um, setup. So off the event, begin play. Just want to see... Yep, yeah, okay. Hmm. I'm going to add another pin in really quickly. And I'm just going to set input to game mode only and get player controller and set show mouse cursor to off really hate that stupid bug and it only affects me uh, it appears and it only affects um, when you're actually in the selected viewport when you hit play, it just throws the mouse cursor out there. You can't do anything until you left click with the mouse to get it to clear. So, kind of torques me off a little bit that I have to do that on every freaking map that I go in, every project that I go into. So, I have to either put it into the maps or I have to put it in the player character so that it, every time I begin to play, it's going to go ahead and um, set that to where it doesn't show it. It's not a bad thing to do, but since this is really and truly going to be a goof-off map, let's save it, give it a name, and demo track. Good enough. And we can just start adding in some stuff like, uh, I don't know, basic. We start here, we're facing that direction, so we'll come over here. Let's add in a cube. Let's do... X scale of 10, Y scale of 5 is good enough, and 0 0.1. Let's make this damn thing thin. And let's go ahead and rotate them. And let's go ahead and raise it up. We wanted a ramp. If I had done a BSP geometry, I wouldn't have to redo my lighting right now. 
So yeah, the, the center of gravity is pretty good, and I don't have the wheels animated yet. I do need to um, set the wheels to, to turn. So that, that's just not currently working yet. I also wanted to try to flip this stupid car over. I don't think it's possible to flip the car completely over. So... Oh, yep, I guess it is. So yeah, I had to go to extremes to get it to, to flip over. So we can tell John uh, it is possible to flip your your thing over. the The setup for the um, this car right now, if you can see where it says that the name of the blueprint is actually BP Cycle Master, it was a hover motorcycle or hover hover cycle that um, he was working with, and I, I played his um, the demo of it for him to test it in the multiplayer. And it's pretty damn cool. And we had some fun with it. So let's just add some dummy cars in. Um, go back into our city. Vehicles rigged. And if I just take and ask her, we'll just throw in a police car. And I'm just going to throw some random junk in here. Um, taxi cab. Now these aren't going to move. Um, if I want them to move, I could actually create another actor for them so they would have physics and so forth, but I'm just throwing them in here just for the sake of having something else to look at. See what happens when we try to jump the cars. I know it's not enough speed, so the the boost. There was a boost effect that he put into it. Um, it caused the sound to go a little bit crappy but it does greatly increase your speed so I want to be able to jump over the cars and it works so you know having a test track where you can come around and test things test the stability of your vehicles um, could set up a slalom course or whatever um, you could actually put terrain in here if you wanted to uh, I don't really care about terrain but you know so you can come in here and go to your sculpting, get your sculpt tool out, drag the brush down really small, and just throw some some odd textures in. Um, there's some other stuff that, um, yeah, like Beam and Drive, Beam and G. I've never really played it, but I've seen a lot of videos on it. Um, let's actually come in here and get our flatten tool out. And let's flatten this back down again. Um, but let's actually... Oh, that'd be cool to play around with uh, on that one for a, a test course. Um, got a ramp tool. Really kind of noobish on the, the ramp tool. Um, never really played with it all that much. So I don't know what the hell I'm doing with it. So, I know you can, as you're creating it, you're creating a, a ramp effect that you can actually set the dimensions for the ramp. And it's supposed to be a smooth transition ramp. So if you're trying to build something to where it's like a, a pathway that goes up the side of a mountain, you could actually do that. Let's just go ahead and do it, do it. And... Um, add ramp and that was easy enough wow that was super easy yay we got a good ramp now and it, it makes it really steep on the other side the whole point is if you've got like a higher elevation you're trying to build it up to you could actually have a, a smooth transitional ramp so that you have well a ramp instead of trying to manipulate the the different um, brushes or the stuff to actually create the um, the terrain could be a pain in the ass to work with um, so this just kind of speeds it up a little bit for for making smooth ramps I've only used it a couple times it took me a while to actually figure it out I'm actually playing in that mode um, but you can actually you know, like I don't like it I can go back in here and I can add that to it or I can reset it. 
I don't like that I just screwed it up there, so. Um, you got erosion tools, so you can add some erosion effects to it. I've got the brush set really small, um, but you can add some, uh, ooh, totally cut off the edge over there. Erosion effects, you can add um, hydro, like water type erosions, noise to make it where it's not smooth. And, you know, just that's why I tell everybody just get in here and freaking play around with it. And if I hit the smooth tool on this thing and just lightly hit it to not make drastic um, changes to it, see how the, uh, the squares are really stretched you can actually kind of blend it around with the smoothing tool and actually take some of that stretching out so if you actually had materials applied to here it will take some of that stretching out I guess if you're trying to make a mountain pass type racetrack this would be good for setting up smooth inclines yeah you'd really want to I mean, spend some time trying to make a good track I'm just making goofy stuff to play around with just to test it out um, but since I have the ambulance the little combat car van police car taxi cab the Camaro the Crown Vic and the other combat car I can quickly change let's go back to the standard mode save all um, if I go to my blueprints for the car that I'm actually using and go to my viewport I need to look at this. This, uh, I know I probably can't see it, but the uh, vehicle collision box. Um, it's not sized correctly. And I did the scale on it, and it really got kind of funky. Um, and I had to change the, the scale of the vehicle to kind of match. Um, I wish that um, Epic would actually make it easier for you to edit your stuff like this right here, your scene route. That's why I almost never use the scene route for something like this. Um, I need to actually stretch it out a little bit longer and make it a little bit skinnier, but then I'm going to screw up the dimensions of the car and I'm going to have to keep kind of messing with that. So, to take the um, the X and make it 3. See, it stretched the car out. So now I have to go back to the vehicle, and I'm at three times, so new point three point four. I should be right. Um, yeah, me and math aren't working together well. So need to make it a little bit thinner. So. It's not bad that it's a little on the wide side, but the Y aspect, I do 0.4 on that new, new, wrong thing, on the collision, do that to 1.5, and then change the vehicle to 0.75. That should make it a little bit better with the collision but what I was saying is now that I have this I could actually come in here to the vehicle and change it out to the police car and I can change the texture to the white and blue which is a standard that comes with the pack or I can do uh, nothing um, or I can do nothing or I can do black and white there we go and yeah there's only a couple textures for the, for the police car. So let's leave it at that one right there. Compile and save. And now we go into the map where actually the police car. I knew it didn't have enough speed to clear the cars that time. Um, for right now, the if you are you play that demo that I uploaded earlier, um, WASD for your controls on the car. And if you hit the up arrow, it's actually going to give you a boost. And if you leave the, you have to keep pressing it, or else you'll you'll stop your boost. 
And there's no boost limit or anything else. Um, so I, I've got to tweak the uh, the files on the um, the car big time. I, mean, I don't know. It's kind of hard to see on here, but the uh, the wheels aren't animated. But I can come in here and instead of being the police car, well, screw it. I want to be the the ambulance. So now, go in here and play, and here we go, we're ambulance. You can probably change the camera view a little bit too, but this seems pretty good. I don't know what you guys think about the camera view on this. The ambulance is really tall, but they, it looks pretty good with the, the regular cars. And there's no suspension. Um, so you said, this was just a, a quick throw together. This is... There's still a lot that needs to be done. Be a Ford Focus. Could be a taxi. Let's go back to the muscle car. And let's go back to the... And we can do that one right there. That's fine. So it's just something to play around with, you know, there's, you know, center of gravity fix just to ensure that you don't roll over, um, or a rollover recovery feature, because I mean, if you're right in the middle of a race and you roll your car over, in real life your race is freaking over, so I don't know, I mean, in any other game there's always an auto f rollover or rollover correction or something like that to to prevent that from being a problem, but I don't know. Do you guys mess around with any racing games, and what do you guys think about it? If you're in a racing game, if you roll your car over, um, shouldn't your race be over at that point? It's not like you're driving a Jeep where it doesn't matter if you roll it over. Just roll it back on its tires and keep on having fun. Done that a bunch. I put my Jeep um, Wrangler on its side quite a few times. Not all the way on its roof, you know, because most of the time I'm, I'm crawling and you know, doing rock crawling and mud crawling and stuff like that, and you know, rolling over on on the side, whatever. To get out, um, it's relatively easy to get out because you just, if you got your top off, then you just kind of like stand up and step between the um, the roll cage, grab the winch cable and hook it up to something and just pull yourself out. Done it a few times. I've only been in one complete rollover one time. It was in a CJ7 and was in Washington State going up a uh, really steep incline. And I mean, it was doing just good, just fine. But it broke that center of gravity and it rolled back onto its ro roll cage and then right back onto its tires again. And we just kept right on going. And it was like it was nothing. So, yeah, rolling the Jeep over is whatever. But if you're in a race and you roll your car over, you're done. I, I think your race is over at that point. So, I'm thinking that's what it should be, but I'm sure that's probably going to torque the nuts of some gamers out there. Mm, my car flipped over and, and it caused me to fail the race. I'm like, well, don't flip your damn car over, dumbass. <laughs> At least that's my way of thinking, but... Why Why am I trying to bring logic into this? So, alright, so that's the test track. So for right now, we got a ramp, and we got a ramp, and we got some cars to jump over. Um, I could sit here and, and actually put out some, some assets and make it to where it's uh, city streets and you race through. What I'll actually do is I will actually make some tracks that will before racing, but I really want to go through the um, this blueprint, and if you look at, and I'm going to ignore the the actual stuff, and if you get it selected on here, you look at all of the things you can freaking configure on this thing. Uh, your wheel radius is one of the things that I had to adjust to make it work for this one, and that helped considerably. Suspension height, I haven't noticed any suspension because the tires are kind of fixed right now. Um, need to see if I can actually affix the tires to the actual scene components. That way they'll actually move. 
Um, the max speed, the acceleration. I can tweak the acceleration. I, it was at 1500. I slowed it down to 1000. I'll put it back at 1200 just to experiment. Um, men grounded wheels to move. I'm not sure what that one does yet. I'll have to talk to John on that one. Minimum speed to steer. I Amir, mean, I, I don't understand what you're saying there, bro. Um, gravity is 2,000. Could probably lighten that up a little bit and get some more air time out of it. Let's actually lower it a little bit to 1,800. Steering torque, back steering angle. Speed boost acceleration. Yeah, I'm going to leave that one alone. Max boost speed. That's our 5,000. Um, so we're going from our normal max speed of 2,600 to almost double at 5,000. Um, Anti-slide at 5. I'm assuming that would be for cornering and, and actually the grip portion of it. Suspension stiffness. Which should probably... Let's take it from 3 quarters down to 0.5 and see what happens. Suspension damping, 0.1. Let's take that to 0.3 see what happens. Linear damping, angular damping, mass in kilograms... There's a lot of settings you can actually work with to um, configure the, this car to set up. I mean, even the horn. You can change the horn sound. And yes, it does have a horn. And yes, I'm probably going to change the horn sound. Nothing personal against John's sound, but um, yeah, we're going to try that. Ooh. Um, let's try that again. A little vibration on start there. Yay! Race over. <laughs> I think instead of the up arrow for the boost, ooh, yeah, that's that's a little bit unstable. Um, probably have to set the suspension stuff back a little bit. I think that's why it was kind of fluttering. would say the left shift since you're on WASD for the primary controls for right now I would say that the shift left shift key would be the best place for the uh, the boost key it's not bad um, but let's actually come back up here and um, The suspension stiffness, suspension dampening. Let's put that back to point one because that's where it was before. Um, let's see if that takes care of the. Yeah. You don't have that bounce anymore when you first start off. But yeah, there's just so many freaking things you can set up on this car. It's pretty cool. So, but what I'm going to work with on this project is over the course of the next few days and stuff like that we'll start working on more of the menu system to get more functionality but it's partially going to be on configuring portions of your car so that you'll be able to access those things directly to have control of configuring your, your spring rates or um, but the actual performance portions I actually want to leave that to if you go to um, a shop and buy uh, springs or a turbo or a supercharger or whatever else that will affect the performance of the car. Mm, cold coffee. So I want to be able to access things like the, um, the wheel radius. Um, I moved it up to 20. I'm actually going to try it at 30. Let's see if that does anything else to it. But I want to access all of those things from parts. Feels a little bit smoother. Um, yeah, it feels a little bit better on terrain as well. And need to tie the wheels in so the wheels will actually animate. 
they'll actually turn based on the rate of speed that you're you're going. Um, fix the engine sounds, fix the horn sound, things like that. I don't know. So, and actually build some tracks, but I really want to focus in on the functionality. To me, functionality is really one of the strongest things you have to work with. So, if you were to get a turbo, then it needs to um, increase your acceleration or your max speed or whatever. Um, if you get a um, a lightweight one-piece front end or whatever, you can reduce your your gravity or um, or your your mass in kilograms or you replace your springs and it affects your, your damping and that kind of stuff to be able to access all of these inside of a blueprint to be able to say if I've got this engine with these springs and these tires tires would affect the performance of your vehicle your springs will affect your performance of your vehicle in fact if you, if you think about it in real life one of the most important things you can start off with on a car that you want to use on a track the first things you want to, to work on is you don't want to go in there and start slapping in a turbo or a uh, supercharger and nitrous you don't want to start adding power adders to your vehicle the first thing you should always look to upgrade on your vehicle before you head out to the track your tires is number one uh, number two brakes if it's a, tr a, a road track if it's actually like drag racing, well, brakes aren't as important, but they do come into play. Um, but tires is one of the most important mods you can do to a car. It just doesn't make cool noises, and it doesn't make you look cooler. It just affects you directly on your performance. Your next is going to be your spring, is your suspension, especially on a road course. If you can't turn for shit, and if you can't brake for shit, and if you can't get any grip, then doesn't matter how fast your car goes if you can't handle a curve if you can't handle um, the fact that when you you dip into a curve your springs bottom out or your tires just won't grip and you spin or slide and drifting is cool if you're drifting drifting's not cool if you're on a road course and you're trying to race if you're going for a time attack and you're trying to win drifting isn't cool you want grip so your tires and your springs are going to help with that. And that will improve your time a hell of a lot more than throwing a turbo or a supercharger on. Um, yesterday, I had to go out and do an appraisal on a Jeep for somebody. And uh, <laughs> my primary vehicle that I drive right now, it is what you consider to be a sleeper. It is a Jeep Grand Cherokee. There's about 800 billion of them. They look like something a soccer mom would drive. So it doesn't look like anything special. It looks like any soccer mom's freaking old Grand Cherokee. However, it's a 1998, so it's old. It's, what, 20 years old now. Um but it's a rare version of it. It's the limited edition with a 5.9 liter uh, V8. That's the same Magna V8 they put into the um, their the full-size Dodge pickup trucks. And um, This thing is a beast. It's a 360 cubic inch motor V8 and a Grand Cherokee. It's the biggest motor they put into the Jeep Grand Cherokee or in any Jeep vehicle from you know the modern age um, auto save you can kiss my big white butt um, but with that big 5.9 liter Hemi engine it's also all wheel drive so and I've got good tires so off the line whenever I stomp the gas pedal I stomp that skinny one all four tires are are getting power and it's just digging in and it just goes it hauls ass off the freaking line and some redneck and their Ford F-150 and I actually I know who it is 
and I think he knew who I was. And I've driven that, that F-150 pickup truck before, and it's sitting right around 500, 525 horsepower because I know who built the engine for it and the car that it came out of. Um, it was a 5-liter Mustang motor that was built by someone and raced in a, a, a drag Mustang. And he got that motor because that person owed him money. And, yeah, he threw that motor into that Ford F-150 pickup truck and made it into a shop truck. Well, he thought with that 500-plus horsepower, he could whip my ass off the line. And he was sadly mistaken. In my rearview mirror, I could see the tire smoke from him breaking traction and not being able to get any hookup off the line. And pff, stoplight to stoplight, you know... There's just no chance. There was no chance that um, that 500 plus horsepower was going to touch my 375 horsepower because that all-wheel drive just hooked up and hauled ass. All right, so you guys got any questions about this project that I'm working with, or or the Polygon City Pack, or any of the Polygon stuff, or or what have you? Um, make sure you know, make sure we got everything saved and. Go back to the main menu. And so whenever I play it in the in this view, you see that the um the images are not lined up correctly. And that's because it's not a, the correct dimensions. So that's why I've been playing it in stop and standalone game so that the window is in the correct dimensions. But I figured I would I would work for about an hour, two hours, and just see what I can come up with. And what will end up happening functionality-wise for the menu is this area right here is going to change drastically. Um, I'm going to add something I haven't done before. I'm going to add some fonts to the, uh, the editor because the default font is just not going to cut it for me. And I'll restructure all this right here. Um, Whenever you're actually in a race, you can actually win um, cash or whatever. So you'll have a cash one, the races you won, and this area right here just below that will actually have your current stats. Like if I decide to do a level system, which I probably won't, um, I know I'll do um, a currency system. So you'll, you'll have your currency here. <coughs> and might have some information about your car like if this is your car um, 400 horsepower with whatever you know whatever just some basic stats about the car might be up here on the top but for now this block is going to be filled up with your your multiplayer stuff but I wanted to restructure this area right here so that's for your current stats of how much cash you've got how much cash you've won overall um, things like that. These right here, like these buttons right here, are not buttons yet. They're just text. If you click on auto sales, it'll bring you up with a car lot where you could buy a new car. Or you can trade in your old car to get a new car or whatever, you know. Um, parts catalog. So you can buy new tires, engines, pieces, parts for your car. And they're probably not going to be anything cosmetic for your cars. Yeah, that's what I was talking about earlier is um, with the... Um, uh, the which let's go back into the lobby map really quickly. Need to go ahead and give it a name and make. So we can go into it. The whole theory behind having a lobby map is if I want to go to the pizza restaurant, I can pull him right here to the pizza pizza restaurant, and I'd be able to hit the F key, and it will then take me out of vehicle mode and put me into pedestrian mode and I can walk into the restaurant or I can walk over to the ATM or I can come over here I can say well you know come out here make a left make a right come over here there's a there's a pizza right here I believe nope, hot dog joint right here on the corner um, if I want to go to whatever you know have different stores available 
um, be able to pull up to it, go to a parking area. Now, I want to make it to where you can only get out of your vehicle if you're in certain areas. So if you're right in the middle of a damn street, you know, you know, you know, anytime you're making a game that's multiplayer, you're going to have some, lack of a better word, douche knuckle that's going to park right here in the middle of a damn road to where it's blocking traffic. And he's going to get out of his car and leave his car right there. So what I want to do is make it to where, A, you have to come over here and go to a parking area and be inside a certain section and then when you hit F or E or whatever to get out of your car your car disappears um, that way the car isn't wasting space if you've got 40 people inside your your menu you don't want some douche knuckle parking his car all up on the sidewalk like this blocking the door so nobody can get into the damn restaurant that would just piss me off to no end and you know somebody would do it it just that's one of those things so let's say that whenever you go to, to get out of your car your car goes away and if you want to go back to your car you actually have to walk over to a parking lot and whatever but the whole idea of the lobby map is actually not even to really even have your car I'd actually prefer it if you were in the lobby you didn't actually have a car you had to walk everywhere yeah, I've seen that happen in GTA, and it just pisses me off. Or they know you're heading back to, to try to get back to your house. So they'll actually go and they'll park and try to block the garage so you can't get your damn car in the garage. So, yeah. If someone wants to be a douche, they're going to find ways of being a douche. So that's why I like the idea of having a lobby map to where you come in and you're not actually controlling your car. Say if you're on this map, you might can you have to walk everywhere. I'll put some cars back into the map so that the they're parked along here. Um, and then when it comes down to actually changing vehicles out later down the line, I've got a couple new vehicles that I want to add in later. Um, but I really need to find somebody who's good with converting models. Um, so I would really I know this is stretching it a little bit, but I'd really like to revive the Motor City Online cars. The cars that were in that game, I want them in this game. And they were low poly, they were a little bit higher poly looking than what these look like, but they're actually lower poly than these are. They just looked eh, decent. But they were like the 32 Ford Coupe, the 40 Ford Coupe, um... 57 Chevrolet Bel Air, the 58 Impala, 64 Impala, uh, 70 Mustang, 65 Mustang, it was a 57 Corvette, there was a 69 Corvette, um, 66 Corvette, but I would like the 63 split window actually. Um, there was the Cuda. There was a Oldsmobile Hurst 442, or the, the 442 in general. There was a 53 Crestline. There was a 48 Caddy. There was a 59 Caddy. Um, there was. Oh my god, what was the other cars that was in there? Um, mentioned the Impalas. There was two new cars that were added, newer cars. There was a Toyota Supra, and there was actually a um, Mitsubishi Eclipse that were added into the game. Um, that kind of pissed off some people, but they weren't really that much of a threat to the people that had established cars. Like my my seventy Camaro. There was a 66 Camaro and a 70 Camaro. There was El Camino and two different years of El Camino. Um, my 57 Corvette and my 70 Camaro with the builds that I had for them, yeah, they were pretty much um, top 10 cars. 
Now, think about that: is if you had um, one of the top ten times on a on a track, and anybody that's going and they're waiting for the race to begin, they see the the leaderboard who has the the fastest times on that particular track and the top ten racers. And I had top ten on almost every track. So that made my car setups worth money. Um, so what I did was people would see that my name was right there on the top ten list every freaking week. Top ten, top ten, top ten. You know, usually in the top five. And um, so what I did was I monopolized on it. I capitalized on that. So I set up an uh, I had I used an auction client that was um, I think the one I used back then was called Auction Hawk. And what it was, I, I could start on the first of the month, and on the first of the month, I would set up auctions that would start um, seven days a week during the normal prime hours, which would be like ten o'clock in the morning to ten o'clock at night. And I would have an auction starting every 30 minutes and would sell the car set up. And all it was is um, a bunch of screenshots that were cropped out so that it would have pictures of the listing of all the car uh, parts, the, the, the springs, the pistons, the shocks, the sway bars, the tires, everything that you needed parts-wise to be exactly the same way as my car was configured for me to get top 10 times every freaking week on that track. And this is for one car for one track. Like um, Goose Point 70 Camaro or Bel Air Grand Prix 57 Corvette. And it was just one car, one track, one car set up for that one track. Now, it would work well for any track, but it, it was listed in the auction as that. And it would start every 30 minutes throughout the day, seven days a week. And I sold that car set up for $10. And being that it was an automatic um, listed auction, I didn't have to do anything. After the first of the month, I could actually configure it and then just let it run for the rest of the month. And just whenever I got the um, the auction, had a buy it now on it. So if somebody would hit that buy it now, then it would send them an email automatically. And it would send me an email automatically saying so-and-so has won the auction for this particular thing. And... It would send them an email saying thank you for your winning uh, bid or your buy it now. Um, as soon as I receive payment, then I will submit this thing to you. It was a prefabbed email. So I didn't have to even respond back to the email. Then um, <laughs> whenever they made payment, which I only accept a payment via PayPal because I had at the time a PayPal Platinum um, business account with because uh, I was an eBay power seller. Um, uh, so yeah, as soon as I got an email saying that um, they had paid for that auction, then I would send them another email saying thank you, and then they would get a third email saying, you know, here's your product. And it had a zip uh, file with the freaking images and a couple text files telling them how to set up their car. And, uh, <laughs> and, and alternative setups if they didn't have the super rare parts. So pretty much I had these auctions listed and automatically starting throughout the month and all I did was just sit back and play video games and collect money because I would also take the the money and I would sell it on eBay hundred thousand dollars for in-game currency for ten bucks on eBay um, I could make you know two hundred thousand credits an hour so that's equivalent to about forty bucks an hour of income right there um, the cars. I sold a 65 Mustang with the chop top with the racing stripe paint job, which was kind of a semi-rare car. A car in a video game. Just like this Camaro right here. If it had a chop top and it had that stripe paint job on it, it's a rare car. You can't get this. It only spawns like there's only 10 of them on the entire server. But it shit on eBay and sold it for 120 bucks for a car in a video game. Hey, people want to spend the money, I'll take it, you know? Alright, so we're going to wrap this thing here up, and, um... 
we're gonna hide our car down here in the subway. So I got some tweaking to do on the car because I, I don't like the fact that um, it's um, whenever I'm at almost a complete standstill, I can turn the car 360 and spin around. I'll do some more work on this map. I'll do um, I'll make this map actually a pedestrian map and a drivable map where you can actually I'll actually build a road course on this map, but then I'll actually develop a handful. I shoot for a total of 10 maps, uh, 10 racetracks. Um, I'll try to, to match up the the number of types of races with a polygon twist, I guess you can say. So imagine combining cars with a polygon um, pirate map and set up streets going through the, um, or like a street track going like a dirt track or whatever throughout uh, the Polygon Pirates thing or the World War II pack or the the Wild West pack or whatever just to have different scenery but short term I'm gonna have this as the lobby map and then from there um, also have this as a drivable map where you can actually drive around like you're, you're doing now but the actual lobby portion of it will like I said, it'll be pedestrian only, and you'll be able to walk around to different places. So, if you know anybody that's good with converting models and that wants to take a crack at it, I've got some... I got the cars that were converted over to Need for Speed um, 4 or whatever. They were, they were converted over to um, one of the Need for Speed games. And I, I'm running Windows 7, and I have a hard time running the older software. I've got a, a Windows Vista laptop that I could that still works good. Could probably fire up the software on that. Um, the cars. Um, this is a partial listing of the cars here. Uh, 32 Ford, 32 Ford, 53 Ford, um, but the the cars themselves is a 340 Duster, 73 Trans Am and Firebird, uh, 70 El Camino, Cuda, Chev Chevelle. That's one of the ones I forgot, and the Nova. But these are 57 Chevy. They're all in a format that's. You've got the FCE file. You've got the the the, the, the Targa, the TGAs, um, and I've, I've been able to get Viv Wizard to actually work a little bit. I've got it uninstalled right now because it wasn't working correctly. Because this is Windows um, Seven that I'm on. What the hell was that damn noise? Yeah, sorry. Um. But if anybody is good with converting these older Need for Speed cars, I've got a handful of them. I also have I have my original CDs somewhere. I also have um, an ISO image of Motor City Online. So I also have the original car models. So this is um, the 8-ball was like a 33 coupe. So you've got 32 Ford, 34 Ford. Um, 40 Ford, 47 Caddy, 48 Chevy Coupe. So yeah, this was the whole list of all of the cars that was from the game. Um, plus all the individual pieces parts, which I don't really need. Like the engine. You could actually take out the engine. You could get fuzzy dice to put in your car. But if anybody knows anybody that's good with converting these uh, Need for Speed cars, I've got the original Motor City Online cars that I would love to have converted. Um... So the, I've tried to convert some of them and the best I could find to convert them over to opening up the uh, the FCE files and fish files which I think was the textures um, I could convert them into another format that I could actually use with an older version of Z Modeler yeah so but if not, I've got some other cars that I can work with. Plus, I've got the uh, the ones from the uh, the Polygon City Pack. But 
But if anybody wants to jump in and help with this project or with the uh, the other project, which is a conglomeration of all of the, the Polygon stuff combined together to have multiple um, game modes. So that's the, um, the idea behind that is to create uh, a huge environment with all of the Polygon stuff. And we're even considering still doing some of the Paragon stuff as well. But we're going to do it probably to start off with until I get someone that can convert all the, the Paragon characters the way that I want them. Um, and there's somebody that'll do it, but yeah, got to pay them. Motor City Online Launcher. Yeah, there was so many people trying to, to revive Motor City Online back in the day. And hell, somebody even offered me at one point twenty five grand just to uh, to revive it. But at the time, there was no Unreal Engine 4. So, yeah. Can make this thing happen. So, like I said, if anybody wants to jump in and help, I need some people that are going to be dedicated to help work on some of these projects so I can actually get them done. I would love to have Motor City Online back, just like a lot of people would like to have Paragon back. And for me, it was just all about the community. The community in Motor City Online was a good group of people. Um, I posted some links to the original Motor City Online stuff. If you're interested in looking at it, if not, then whatever. All right, I'm going to get ready to get out of here. Um, just thought I would, would let you guys tag along while I was just fiddling around with this project. You know, most of the work part was done in the first half of it. And also trying to, to show off a little bit of what's going to happen. So let's look at the menu one more time real quick so I can run down what I plan on doing with the menu. So we'll have, a like I said, the in-game, you're going to have pedestrian mode, you're going to have race mode. Um, you come in here, you'll be able to go to your auto sales so you can buy more cars. Um, your parts catalog, you can actually go into there and buy basic level parts. Auto auctions. Um, I hope to have a pretty good setup of cars so that um, if you have a car you want to sell that might be cheaper than going to the auto sales. Auto sales will be the the game hosted by this car. You buy the 67 or 68 Camaro bone stock with a 396 or a 350 or whatever. Um, but somebody may have already beefed up one or give it a custom paint job or whatever. And we'll, I want to have multiple paint jobs for each one that you can select from, just like the paint shop was in Motor City Online. So if you wanted to host your own auction, you could sell your own cars that were customized or whatever. Um, parts auction is the same thing. If you had parts you want to sell cheap that um, you can just get rid of. Instead of just scrapping them, you can actually sell them on the auction. Somebody might buy them, they might not. Um, so my auctions will actually be, if you have auctions hosted, you click on that and you can actually view the, the auction listing. Garage, you can open up your garage, which will have a nice little screen that will show all your cars parked side by side, or at least a certain number of them. Um, workshop. I don't rem remember what the workshop actually was, but I think that's where you could actually go in there and paint your car and things like that. Um, the racing, would you click on street racing, it'll bring you a listing of the available street racing tracks. You can pick one, see if there's any open races available, or host your own race. Circuit racing, drag racing, open trials, which would be a race without winning. I'll probably take that away because it's it was something that was in the original game that I didn't really believe in all that much. Um, test drive mode. That's where I want to have the test track with the ramps and just where you can go out there. And I want to do something that we used to do. We would go into one of the circuit tracks or one of the racetracks and we would do demolition derby because the cars would would get damage and show damage as you're going around the track and you're hitting fin your, your fenders against the wall or you hit somebody else or whatever and you got to a certain point of damage your car was just done you couldn't race anymore or if you flipped over you were just done you were out so I want to bring in Demolition Derby um, I thought about it but, and the, the more I think about having 
the lobby where the players are moving around, the less I really want to have cars in the lobby. Because, like I mentioned earlier, you're always going to have some douche knuckle that's going to park their car in front of the, the, uh, a restaurant to keep people from getting into it. So, um, you really kind of either have to to set up a some way of preventing that. So, I think just by having the drivable lobby will actually just be a pedestrian-only lobby and players with no collision so you can walk through them and nobody can block anybody from doing that. But I still like the idea of one thing we talked about for the main main game in our lobby. Our moderators, the in-game moderators, will actually be um, dressed as police officers. And if you get somebody spamming, they have to be physically in the, the, the lobby. So they they have a character in that room. So if there's somebody spamming, the um, the moderator can go over there and arrest them and put them in jail. You know, put cuffs on them because there's handcuffs in the uh, the polygon stuff. So put handcuffs on them, and set up an animation for it, then drag their little nappy ass to a, a prison cell and let them sit there with a chat mute, so they can't do anything but sit there until their sentence is up. And the way I used to do it on World of Warcraft private servers, where I used to manage those, was whenever I put you in jail for an hour, okay, your, your sentence is one hour. And during that one hour's time, you're on full chat mute. You can't talk. You cannot use voice. You can't chat. You can't do anything. Well, so, well, screw it. I got to sit here for a freaking hour. I was, I'll just log out and come back in an hour. <laughs> no. If you were in there for five minutes and you logged out, when you log back in, you still got 55 minutes left on your friggin' sentence. So if you did something to piss off <laughs> the, uh, the the moderators and you got an hour of chat ban and you were put in a prison cell, you're going to have to spend that hour there or else you're not going to be able to play the game anymore. Your your character is locked. You can't go raised. You can't do anything until you, you sit in that jail cell for an hour. And your hour comes up, you're released, and you can go play. Go play nice. Um, that lets the the moderators, they'll be cops. They'll be walking around. So if they see somebody being a douche knuckle, they can <laughs> arrest them, throw them in jail. Or they can find them um, on the spot and, and charge them money or whatever. You know, write them a ticket. <coughs> Then with the um, developers or the the true staff members, since we already have the FBI characters in the game, then we can actually come in there as the the, the development staff will actually be dressed as the FBI characters. Got male and female, so why not? And we'll have the SWAT characters actually will be NPCs. So if you had someone that's just being an absolute douche and you really just you want to spark some fun and deal with them a little bit more harshly um, will be the ban bot and if you see the SWAT characters heading across town going somewhere that means somebody getting the ban hammer thrown on that ass and you see the SWAT guys moving out they're going out they're gonna be armed they're gonna walk out they're gonna find the character no matter where they are on the map they're gonna find them and they're going to kill them they're going to shoot them, and they're going to die. The character's going to die. They're going to drag that corpse <laughs> and throw it in the water. So I, I think that would add a fun element to it. But that's on the band tag. You know, if you get banned for an hour, you know, if like, you know what? I feel like being, you don't want to screw with, with Manalus a little bit. So we're going to ban him for five minutes. So next thing you know, you see SWAT team running across the map, and they execute you, throw you in the water, and then five minutes you can come back. But... You know, not saying we would abuse it like that, but no action. Haven't heard of that one. It's basically a life simulator. And don't want to be like a life simulator because that real life sucks. I really don't like real life. So that's why I'm always in video games where I'm screwing around with them. Um, so let's actually go to the lobby map and I'm actually gonna go in here on foot change the game mode to third person and we'll do it in selected viewport 
So yeah, um, want to make the ATMs work um, to where you can check your account balance and that kind of junk. Um, if you want to go into the pizza restaurant, you walk over to the door, you hit the E key or the F key or whatever I, I bind it for, and it will actually teleport your character to something, you know, another location. So you're actually in the interior of it and then have a local chat room, which that I got to work on too as a chat and make it to where you can actually have a chat room that's isolated to the store or location you're at. And little things like, um, oh, I don't know, the sign giveaway is actually on the wrong side. The cars are, are left-hand drive, set up like for North America. I've played on live servers in Arma 2 and Arma 3, and it they're fun as long as people are playing along correctly, but you're always going to have somebody that's going to be an abuser that's going to screw things up. That's why, like with um, the World of Warcraft private servers that I managed, um, we always had um, GMs, Game Masters, or you know, moderators. We always had somebody there in 24-7. And one of the main servers that I, 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 I ran, I was a lead administrator for... Um, yeah, I love this this map. I, I wish I could take credit for actually have created it. The only thing I, I can take credit for is making the traffic cones be able to knock over and making the characters and cars work. But, yikes. Um, so yeah, since we had um, we had low-level GMs, which were the, the low-level moderators. Um, they could handle minor questions. And then you had regular GMs, which would handle a little bit more severe stuff. And then you had admins who could handle the full bans and, and things like that. Um, and then myself, I was the lead admin and the creative content director. So I created all the content that was for it. And yes, it's a World of Warcraft. You already have certain content. But what I would do was I would find a region that wasn't being used or areas of the map that are not accessible by anybody. You, you've never seen them in the real world of Warcraft, the retail version of it. So I'd, I'd open those up and I'd create all new um, bots or all new um, vendors or new quest systems and things like that. I was always creating new content. And yeah, we always had a live moderator there. Like, we had this thing called a level road. And the level road was, you'd have level one characters. You you first start off on the uh, the server, you're level one. And now you can go out there and play just like you would on the vanilla servers. And that's cool. But you could also go to the level road. And you're a level one, so you're going to go out here and you're going to come up on a pack of 25 level 1 characters that won't aggro. So you just walk over and you take your sword, your spells or whatever, and you kill this one, you walk over to the next one, you kill it, you walk over to the next one, kill that one, and then after a minute or a few seconds they'll respawn and you can just sit there and kill these level 1s till you get to level 3. Then you come over here, you kill level 3s, and then you got 5 and 7 and 10 and 15 and you know and just incrementally going up so you could just sit there and fight your way from the start to the finish and we changed the level cap to level 255 so and I actually brought it back to 100 because of a bug with uh, one particular character but um, to go from level 1 to 100 you could start on one end of the road and go to the other end and be max level but you you want to keep upgrading your gear as, as you go. But you'd always have some asshole that would be a higher level, like a, a mage that would throw an area of effect spell out there, and he would just walk up there, and he would do this AOE attack, and bam, kill all the level 1s. Bam, kill all the level 3s. Bam, kill all the level 5s. And kill all the low-level shit. And these people who are trying to actually level up, they don't have any targets to kill. They have to stop and wait for everything to respawn so they can go back over and do it. So it was a rule on the server. You don't you don't do that. It's just that's just not cool, man. No bueno. 
that would actually have moderators that would sit out there on a level road. They had chairs, they had a little barricade, so players couldn't go up and screw with them. They were all they they did was they just sit there and they watched chat and they watched this level road for those assholes going by trying to uh, um, spam AOE to kill all the low level mobs. Um, I came up with a series of scripts and spells that uh, that worked pretty good. And what would happen is you could left click on the character as they went by as they're they're doing their AOE attack and spam killing the low level mobs, and then you hit the F2 key and it would paralyze them. They couldn't move, and it would teleport them to a prison cell. Lock their character, lock their chat. They couldn't do anything but sit there. And then uh, another GM would actually teleport to them and remind them of the rules. This is against the, the server rules for you to do what you just did. Don't do it again. You know, slap them on the wrist and put them in jail for an hour or ten minutes or whatever. So, yeah, we, I, I believe in full-time, 24 hours a day, seven days a week moderation. If you go into games like Star Wars The Old Republic, and I actually had a video up, and it showed this bot, and what it was is it would sit there, and it would find this one, you know, the, the whoever would initiate it, would stand it on this one thing, and inside of its reach would be five mobs that would spawn and it would use its ranged attack to pull that that mob it would turn a little bit pull that one turn a little bit pull that one and it would sit there and it would just turn in a circle using its ranged attacks to kill enough mobs to make it to level five because you can't use voice chat in that game until you're level five so it would sit there in that one spot and turn kill a target turn kill a target turn and it would just keep turning. It's just a turning bot. And they would do that until they got level 5. And then they would take that character and immediately go to the nearest station, or whatever the, the thing was called. And um, they would immediately start spamming chat trying to sell gold or whatever. Like the World of Warcraft gold spammers. That's all they are. And they would sit there and they would bot in that one spot so that they could get their character to level 5 so they could immediately run in there and start spamming the shit out of their damn whatever, their leveling service or their gold or what have you and I did a video on it just to showcase it it had some little shit nugget that cussed me out and said how much of a fail that I am because I'm complaining that um, that somebody was using a bot and was you know using it so that they could go and start spamming they were defending the spammer. Really? You can eat a dick. You can eat a whole forest of dicks. How about that? So, um, yeah, that person was blocked from my YouTube channel for being stupid. How dare somebody defend a spammer? It just ain't gonna happen, bro. Not on my channel. So, by having... If you had an active moderator and you got someone that's freaking botting, blatantly botting, and um, all you gotta do is walk over there and and see that they're botting. You can tell that they're botting because their character's moving in a circle. And if you talk to them, they don't respond back. You kick them offline. And if they automatically relog and go back to that same spot and start doing the same thing again, banish it out of their account. They're out of here. It's simple as that. If you see someone spamming in chat, immediately ban the account. Permaban. No second chance. Nobody likes those gold spammers. Nobody likes spammers in chat. Nobody likes those... Um, anybody here play The Division? Um, I like playing The Division. And I go in here and I'll play it from time to time. And you got... If I find out there's a free weekend on the division, I'm not even going to play. Because the amount of stupid that piles in there for a free weekend is just absolutely amazing. Um, 
the one mission that everybody farms because it's easy enough to do with a good group. I solo it, you know, even on its hardest mode, just because I'm awesome like that. Because um, I am cool and, and awesome. Yeah. Mm. Um, so, but they'll run it, and in one part of the mission, you have to to rescue this one police officer that was captured or whatever, and his name is Ramos. And a part of the voice speech that you hear is the you know the storyline going on in the background. You hear negative Ramos, you know whatever. So the dipshits will sit there and spam chat with negative Ramos. Negative Ramos. It's just as bad as the old freaking Chuck Norris bullshit in World of Warcraft. So people like that, they're just making pointless to me that's spam there's no point in you making that comment and it's not one you'll end up with 40 or 50 people inside the uh, the main chat area that are all spouting out something to the effect of negative ramos so it's un unwarranted it's uncalled for it's spam those kind of people would just get i i would chat ban them I would, I would throttle them. It's like the idiots in um, uh, World of Tanks, one of the most toxic communities you can think of. Um, you go into a World of Tanks game, and I, was, I go in there. I've got, let's play on World of Tanks. I've got my account, my primary account that I use. Um, when you, you create a free account, it's a free-to-play game. And I really hate free-to-play games for the fact of the garbage you get in them most of the time. And when you, you start your account, you get five or six, one tank per per country. And it's a tier one tank, and that's how many garage slots you have. Well, if I'm not going to play the British tank, I'm just going to scrap that, and I can get two American tanks, you know, or, or two, you know, an extra Japanese tank, or an extra German tank, or whatever else. Or you can spend real hard-earned cash, real money, and buy an extra garage slot, so that you can now have, instead of, we'll say, five countries and five tanks, I think it was like eight now, or whatever. Um, so now you can, if, if there's eight countries, and you have eight slots, if you want an extra one, then you have to pay real cash, so you can have nine slots or ten slots. You have to pay real money for that. And it equates to about four or five bucks for you to buy an extra garage space. Um, my garage is has 86 tanks in the garage. 86. Instead of eight, it's 86. I've got premium tanks that cost over $50 per tank. I've got like 20,000 plus battles in this. I've played the game a little bit. I've, I've earned my, my knowledge of what I can do in that game. I know how to play my tanks. And um, I have one particular tank that it just sucks. It doesn't work well as a light tank. It doesn't work well for anything, but it's got a good spotting range and it's got a good gun to it it's accurate low damage but it's accurate and a good rate of fire so I use it to spot for the TDs or I use it to spot for artillery I stalk up and I use it to snipe with I know how to work that tank and make it work with the best of my ability I've had lots of good battles and that little fragile ass tank has eggshell armor you look at it wrong and it dies well some douche nago decided that I'm not playing my tank suitable for his needs so he shoots me friendly fire okay and then somebody else on, on my my team shoots me because I'm not responding to his the other guy's um, abuse for him saying that I, I'm not playing my tank right I already had a kill they didn't um, I've already got spotting damage I, I've got a higher score than they have at this point and now they have negative scores because they're shooting me. So that wasn't good enough and because I wasn't still responding to their their request because, you know, 
they were better than me. They know how better to play my tank than I do. So they, they pushed my tank out into an open field to prevent me from being able to get back into cover so that the enemy could see me and shoot me and kill me. And, yeah, I, I promptly went ahead and just said, fuck World of Tanks and fuck Wargaming. And I uninstalled every damn Wargaming product that I've got. World of Warships. I got a bunch of premium shit in World of Warships. World of Warplanes. I got premium shit there too. But I will not go back to another Wargaming product. Wargaming can suck my nuts. I've played those games. My first install of World of Tanks was closed beta. Closed beta. It was a super tester with freaking Wargaming. I got to play things before anybody else. I had direct access to the developers of the game on Skype. I talk with the developers daily, um, and you know, I'm not going to deal with a toxic community. It's just not going to happen. I've tried three times in the last few months to try to play that game, and I just can't do it. It's just way too toxic. The people are just idiots. And I put a video out saying War Gaming's players are whatever and I meant it and and it's because of World of Tanks there that whole community is just garbage so and uh, it's kind of hard to to play a game whenever you got people that are griefing you or team killing you um, pushing you out or and it, it, it happens all the freaking time it's not like it's an isolated incident that tank alone has been team killed more than any other tank that I've got in my, my garage. And I have 86 freaking tanks in that garage. So, yeah, that means something. I have been team killed three times in that tank just because of how I play that tank. But I always seem to sur either survive or do pretty well throughout the battle when people leave me the hell alone. So I'm not going to deal with toxic communities. I want active moderatorship. I want active people 24 hours a day seven days a week physically like this map right here um there's going to be a police officer and there's gonna be at least one moderator at all times on this map 24 hours a day seven days a week will be that character and go into my my player base right now and go to my viewport and select my mash and I can go to um, mail police. There'll be these um, mail police officers walking around with that lovely, lovely 80s porn stash right there underneath his nose. Um, walking the beat. They're going to be covering the streets and watching chat for spammers and watching people for griefing and what have you and if they see something they're gonna take care of it um, the police stations actually on the other side of town they can hang out in the police station they can hang out in the freaking donut shop I don't give a damn as long as they're physically watching chat and are actually patrolling town I want an active system of dealing with toxic players I'm just not gonna put up with it there's no reason for it the whole concept of a video game is to have fun. And if you're not having fun because somebody else is being a douche knuckle, that other person has got to go. Uh, so, that's what I'm looking towards. All right, I haven't got any work done in almost an hour, so we've just been sitting here bullshitting around talking about the uh, the features, which is good. So that's something to look forward to is having active moderatorship, um, having more than just walking around town. The race mode for this game itself, and the whole concept behind behind Center of Gravity Cog, the the main game that we're working on. Is and now for right now, I'm going to use these polygon assets because they look good and they work. And they there's tons of stuff so we can focus in on content instead of the map stuff. 
you know, the, the assets and the models and the animations and whatever else. We can focus in on the actual content of the game, the different game modes, team versus team, deathmatch, um, MOBA or racing or the World War II version with um, the the tanks and the ships and the airplanes and the, the snipers and the, you know, that kind of stuff. The Western pack with, um, you know, quick draw and, you know, looting the, the train or whatever, you know, multiple game modes all linked from a central lobby system that would be a city like this. Eventually want to replace this city with one that was created by myself or with somebody on the team so that stuff like you come over here, you enter, and it teleports you to another section of the map where you have a separate chat room for that area. You can go in there and buy things. And at some point, like these big tall blue buildings would be apartment complexes. So you could actually come over here and go to, well, I live in the round one over here. So I have to come over here and go to this door. And as soon as I walk across and I come to the front door, I hit E to enter the building and bam, it takes me right to my apartment automatically. It's essentially just teleporting you to another section of this map that has different scenery. You have a full interior that's dedicated to your apartment. And if you want somebody to be able to join your apartment, here's where the fun comes in is the lobby itself needs to be a dedicated server. And that's where the fun comes in is getting that to work. Because now whenever you want to go into a race or you want to go into a battle or you want to go into a MOBA or you want to go into whatever, like the, the popcorn. You come over here, this is a movie theater. So you walk inside, you can go watch a freaking movie. Um, you want to go play um, a Paragon style game. You go to the, the Paragon building over here the Paragon Taco Stand, or whatever the hell, you know. So you go in there, and now you decide, I'm going to go ahead and try to join a game. It's going to work the same way my multiplayer works now, so that whenever you actually try to play right now, you either host or join a game. So now whenever um, you, man, unless you want to you wanna go play um, the World War II uh, tank versus tank game so you go into that area the the military base that's on this side of town over here we'll say as soon as you walk into that area you can select to host a, a battle or join a battle and it works just the same way that uh, the multiplayer works now in this project whereas this lobby map whenever you come back to the lobby you're going to be in this 3D environment where you can walk around and socialize so the the Motor City game and the the COG game will all be combined in together is this central system for people to be able to, to do that with. So you're going to have one big um, server and to play the, the side game, the other games, it's a host system the, the way that the current multiplayer is running now. And Damn it, Jim, it is almost 5 in the morning. New subscriber, Chris Bolton, thank you. And thanking everybody else also. Since it's almost 5 o'clock in the morning, I definitely got to get out of here and get some rest. Um, picked up quite a bit of subscribers in the last few months. I appreciate every single solitary one of you guys. Um, I've been having some requests to reset up my... Uh, Patreon account. I've actually lost money on Patreon. Um, I've had several people who pledged just to be able to get my simple multiplayer system and then turn right around and as soon as they get it, they um, cancel immediately or whatever and end up um, the money just disappearing. Never got paid for several people getting my simple multiplayer tutorial. Um, through uh, Patreon. And then the, the last person that bought it through PayPal freaking ignored what I said and paid me with Canadian dollars. And all said and done, whenever I was selling it for $10, now I'm selling it for $20 because i got to make up for, for lost time and lost money. Um, the They paid in Canadian dollars and with the transfer to U.S. dollars and with PayPal's fees, 
that ten dollars turn into six dollars. So I lost almost half of my money right there from that. So yeah, I'm tired of getting shit on every time I turn around. So simple multiplayer tutorial or template is twenty bucks. Um, lifetime support. It's guaranteed to work. Works every time. It's the same thing that I'm using right here. It's the same thing that I'm using in all of my projects. Um, it looks a little bit different than this because, you know, I've changed it around. But you get the, the single player where bang goes right into the game. You get multiplayer. You get the ability to host a game. Or you can actually find a lobby. Currently, right now, whenever you're trying to find a lobby, it's going to say 999 for ping. That's just because it you don't have, and I don't have, a... Uh, uh, developer app ID for this project but you get this block right here this block right here the exit game and you get a very very basic menu and it gets you started with a working multiplayer to get you into a game going um, I thought that was an exceptional deal for ten dollars um, but I still get people asking me how to do it I'm like I'm not gonna tell you how to do it if I sell it <laughs> shit I'm trying to make a few bucks so I can afford to buy um, Polygon assets. So it works. It works every single solitary freaking time. As long as you have Steam turned on. Because if you don't have Steam turned on, you're going to see Go Connect to Steam, dummy, and you're not going to see the avatar here. But as soon as you actually connect to Steam, it's going to be the same thing if you play it in standalone game. That menu pops up and. <laughs> Guess what? It works lovely at that point. See what I was saying about the the words not lining up, but when you do it in the um, the actual standalone, everything lines up perfectly. See, look, it's got my username and my Steam avatar. So, yeah, that's the thing. And it works. Like I said, I use it in all my projects. And I'm going to get off my soapbox. I'm going to get my ass in bed. Guys, thanks for watching. Thanks for keeping me occupied while I was trying to work. And hopefully we'll get some more stuff done on this. Try to get some more people to help out with some other stuff. Um, but I want to start focusing in on the actual content of the menu. Getting some more of that functionality working. And whenever I get bored with working on that then I'll start working on uh, the test map or one of the racetracks or whatever or setting it up to where you have more than just one car or just more than just one paint job or whatever you can select between the different four paint jobs and that kind of stuff adding some functionality to it and make sure it replicates correctly inside of the race um, setting up uh, interiors for things like the um, the pizza shop or what have you so for now, whenever you're actually playing, it's actually going to be, and I changed over the game mode. So now instead of actually driving in this game, you're actually a pedestrian. But So now whenever you're in the lobby, you can actually go over here to the pizza joint, or you can come over here to the ATM, or you can go over here and get a bus who knows maybe set it up to where if you walk over here hit E or F or whatever and it brings up a listing of places you can go take a bus to a new location bowling alley yes we will have a working bowling alley we will have a working casino working movie theater we're going to have a bunch of working things that are other stuff to do STD something to do but yeah if you want to go race then you go race and want to have, like I said, more of the menu functional uh, stuff done. So like the uh, the garage, so you can see your cars. The auctions, that's something I've never done before. I set up an auction inside a game. So, yeah, that's going to be down the road. Um, the auto sales will definitely be something that works. So you can buy new cars. Um, we'll start off with probably the... Uh, little junky cars like the I say junky cars um, like the little Ford Focus car you'll start off with either that or um, that the two door or the four door version 
probably the four door version and then you go over to this this will be the next upgrade you could buy or you can go into the, the Camaro or you can get the Crown Vic we'll save the police car and the van and the ambulance as scenery vehicles and the taxi cab so you can get the Crown Vic you can get the two compact cars and the the muscle car so you'll have at least four cars to be able to choose from and buy from so you'll be able to buy them inside the menu and then use them on the track then buy upgrade parts I'll, I'll work on the functionality tomorrow or today all right so we're gonna hit save all save current and we are going to close that and we're going to go ahead and close down on the live stream and I thank everybody for tuning in and watching and we shall see you soon keep up with me on on discord and you guys have a good night